Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about opening queen sacrifices that um, that occur really, really early in, early in the game. Uh, I have one in specific that I think is not immediately winning the game, but um, is very, very promising. In fact, um, it's not like uh, like Legal's mate, like this one that happens in the two knights uh, kind of Italian uh, opening. I think this is a well-known um, kind of trap, you know, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, and now we have the very, very nice move of knight e5 uh, threatening this bishop right over here, and we have this well-known checkmating kind of idea. Beautiful stuff. Um, but, uh, but of course, that's a forced win, and uh, the idea is that um, after knight takes here, takes here, takes here, queen b5, c6, it takes there, and, well, black wins, so. Uh, well, I mean, white wins uh, a pawn and wins the game. But um, the other one that I want to show you today is not so positionally clear as that. There's no free pawn that you're ahead, but um, it's visually very appealing. And we reach this after the move one knight of three. Of course, this doesn't force a queen sacrifice by any stretch, but um, after d6, I want to show you guys the queen sacrifice idea today. Um, d4, that's the normal way of taking the center. Uh, I think one idea that why you don't want to push e4 instead of d4 yet is because that might allow black to play c5 again to the Sicilian. This way uh, black pretty much is um, not allowed to play c5 here because um, after c5 probably white just can take or just push the pawn and get a very nice Benoni. Um, c5 might be possible though here, nevertheless. Okay. Um, yeah, and here uh, black is, of course, many moves, but um, for the sake of trying to get to this queen sacrifice that I've seen in a lot of games, um, a lot of people play this offbeat move, um, knight c6 here. It's quite unusual. I don't come across this ever in over-the-board chess, uh, over chess games, but um, in online play, when I'm playing bullet or blitz, I have a lot of people play this against me. And I always remember this theme that, okay, I will try to try to take as much space as possible, but I want to delay it for one move. I tend not to want to push d5 here. This might encourage black just to play back here or, you know, to move the knight here, um, which is probably good for white, but um, I think that you should just push the center pawn with e4 and just have these nice two center pawns here. So that's pretty good for white if you ask me. Okay, and here we have the parting of the ways here. Black can play probably the most natural move. I mean, if there was one natural move that Black could play in this position, it would probably be Bishop G4. Yeah, and I mean, if Black is Black's pretty. I, I mean, it almost looks like that Black is going to play Queen D7 and long castles with the setup, but um, Bishop G4 is just kind of designed to get out the last piece on the Queen side to initiate that plan. And here we come to the critical position. Here I think that uh, white's best move um, is pretty much d5 here. Um, I, I don't I don't know, bishop e2 is pretty good for white. I mean, there's a lot of good moves that are just simply leaving white with a slightly better to a moderate advantage position kind of for, for white. So there, you can't go wrong. Uh, the idea is that now white can play d5, and now this knight is forced to move here. Black can, of course, just bail out and play bishop takes f3. You can play knight b8 and drop the knight back, but it's not really fun if you do if you do those moves. The, the real action starts with knight e5. Yeah, keeping the pin on this knight, and the normal reaction would be, you know, bishop e2 when I think the position is probably balanced here. Um, I think black, black can take with either a piece on f3 here. Maybe with the knight, and probably what it would take with the pawn. Even this kind of structure is maybe slightly better for white, but um, excuse that. But I think this pawn right here is a very nice kind of configuration, and um, that's pretty good for white as well. It's not a bad continuation either. But um, the idea that I'm thinking of is knight takes e5 here. This is a very, very nice queen sacrifice on move 5. It doesn't immediately win the game, guys. That's the key I want to emphasize here. This is not checkmating black by any stretch. The there's a long line here. 
and it's pretty forcing in uh, continuing the game here that starts with bishop takes d1. That's the, the main move. Of course, black cannot just take here because this drops a piece. So you need to really just respond to this knight takes uh, by just taking the queen. You need to grab as much material as you can. And the whole idea behind white's idea is that now this knight is here. These light squares are weak behind the king over here. All the squares are covered around the king. Um, and what you have to notice is that you have this check right here on b5. And black can, of course, not just take there because, um, I mean, either knight takes or bishop takes are very, very fine, I think. Probably even bishop takes and maybe a future knight of seven um, are good. Not just takes. And uh, that's just winning for white, of course. So we don't need to look at that. So black really has to play c6. And, in, and it almost looks like white's not getting anything in this position, but we can capture with the pawn first. And this pawn is just very, very close to, let's say, uncovering this bishop's diagonal if it somehow advances in some way by capturing or moving to the c7 square. And by doing that, we attain very, very serious compensation here. Um, it's really difficult to suggest a move for black here. And the best move is really queen a5 here, giving this check along this diagonal, buying a tempo um, to survive from this, this terrible discovery, discovery check um, that would lead to a win for white. Um, you, you know, you really can't get away with any, anything else. There's like nothing else you can do. This, this kind of continuation is just terrible as white gets a queen and, well, oh, I mean, it's just a, it's just checkmate there. So, yeah, queen a5 is by far the best move here. And after this, I think the normal response is to protect the bishop. That's a good move in knight c3. I think you need to, it's pretty obvious that you need to protect the bishop. And black needs to really, just get the heck out of the way. I mean, he's he's desperate to figure out um, something here to do. I mean, he is in serious serious danger. Very very de deadly stuff here. Um, so one idea is that here in this position, Black really has to force it here. I think the main line is castling long here, but another move might be a six, um, with the idea that if you take here. I'm probably just capturing your bishop here, and if you capture my rook, I can uh, just take back with the queen, and maybe black's fine. I think black's totally fine here, actually. And that's not ideal for white. And if you can't capture on b7, it's not so clear what you do, uh, but you luckily have the very, very nice um, deflection kind of move here in b4 here. Um, and after this, I think white is probably acquiring a excellent position here. Um, notice that if the queen captures then we have this check right here and this king is just under fire here. Notice that you can't even take the bishop because we're just checkmating here. So the queen can't really capture the pawn and if it has to go back, probably if it goes back you still capture the pawn, don't you? It's really really bad for black. Um, probably has to capture the bishop and after the very, very calm and cool takes, taking the queen there, taking the here, pawn captures pawn, rook b8. Hmm, probably you can insert this knight c6 move, takes, and king takes. Um, white is up a clear pawn here and probably should win the game here, given that he's going to get an outside, outside pass pawn here uh, with this 2 3 on 1 majority, technically. I think that's winning the game for white. So after uh, knight c3, I think black's best move is castles. And here I think what we should do is gain a tempo on the queen with the knight here. Um, you can also take on b7, but I, I think this is very preferable um, just to get the queen under attack here. Gain another tempo, and uh, one idea is that if knight, uh, queen c7, um, knight d5 comes. Maybe this, is the Maybe this is a good line, the best line relatively speaking for black, but it's hard to really figure that out to be honest. Uh, this is a nice opening trap kind of stuff. Um, one idea is that maybe black has to give back the queen really. Uh, if you go to queen b8, I think c7 hits and this is a complete um, disaster for black. I mean his position is in shambles and he's down a piece I think. So he can't play that really. Um, one idea is that maybe black just gives up the queen this way with taking, taking, and um, Maybe taking here. 
this kind of position where you know it's about equal material but you know white has excellent excellently placed pieces and um, probably just castles here uh, followed by rook fc1 and you know probably a small attack on the king side here white's king is, black's king is pretty barren here and white has a very excellent position in my opinion um, I don't know if this is winning it might be winning for white I just I'm not terribly convinced too too unconvinced about the position here black has no development at all and an open king and no pawn shelter really this pawn is pretty weak um, and black white is a two on one majority with active pieces it really is a substantial advantage uh, I just don't know if it's winning probably it is so maybe that's the best line that black can put up but um, most of the time black the black player probably won't think of giving up the queen so he'll play queen b4 you know um, and after this there revolves some complications around this position with a3 gaining another tempo this is a very very fascinating queen journey right here um, now going to c5 here you can gain another tempo on the queen the queen goes to h5 and the rook takes on d1 so now we have two pieces and if I'm not mistaken um, two pawns if I'm, if I'm correct or no one pawn sorry guys one pawn and here I mean this is a great position for white white's threatening rook d5 um, gaining a tempo on the queen and threatening to probably just swing the rook over to either the b uh, b5 or b a5 squares rook d4 might be an idea to get the rook also into the attack this is a very very normal uh, kind of rook swing as you wouldn't expect actually so i mean there's some moves that black can try here of course he uh, might try you know knight of six um after this i think the best move mm, could be probably c takes b this leads to a very ferocious attack i think and i don't know black no matter what black does he could play king b8 or king takes b7 but i think white is still playing the same kind of ideas here let's just say if he takes knight a5 I think the king would probably back up here. But now white brings the little rook into the game and, well, with no development, that's uh, not going to be ending well, I think. So, I mean, black's got to develop something, but this kind of position with bishop c6 is looking just awful for black. So, um, I think this is very good for white, probably winning for white, this huge attack. Look, we got five pieces on the king right here. That's just... There's just no chance that black is going to survive there. It's just a very beautiful uh, kind of position with the rook coming to d4. I love this configuration, really. And um, the pawns can be considered pushed uh, at some point, just in case something goes wrong. You always have this pawn majority here on the king side. Queen side, excuse me. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, um, let's see if he goes knight, knight f6, right? Grr. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, excuse me. Whoops. Uh, maybe black can consider just taking on c6, but I mean, to be honest, if white can just probably capture, and we always have this idea of knight b5, knight takes a7, maybe the other knight coming in supporting that b6 square, bishop b6, also an idea. It's just a terrible, terrible position here. Um, maybe black plays knight f6. I'm not really sure what he does. But still, we have this knight b5 idea, and wow, a7 is just crumbling here, and I really don't have a recommendation for for white uh, for black, excuse me. I don't know, maybe rook d7 giving back some material is a good idea, but we could probably continue the attack with either rook d4 or rook d3. Maybe rook d3 threatening rook c3, and this king is just getting smoked here in the center. So I mean, that's just an idea. Um, very beautiful kind of line. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of games in this position that people, the black player has fallen for, but um, but it's not so obvious, of course. So, um, yeah, guys, I think that's uh, the main idea of this kind of position. Um, just that rook takes d1, and we're getting very, very good compensation. And I think we've seen some good attacking lines with um, in this kind of variation with... Um, the rook coming to d3 i think this is a or excuse me the rook coming to d4 in some of these lines black can't be inept about um his development just for the sake of uh seeing what black might do um 
Uh, let's see if we can figure out a move that might allow rook d5. I'm, I'm interested in finding a move like that. Hmm. Okay, let's get knight h6. I mean, black really can't allow this rook left either. So, I mean, this is just terrible for terrible for black. So, maybe even rook g5 might be legitimately considered. But uh, I think the safe is uh, safest continuation is something like that, where probably there's a checkmate here coming. And hmm, I would consider bishop a7. Looks pretty, pretty good to me. Okay, I don't know, but uh, this kind of stuff is just a killer for killer for white. I just something is aesthetically pleasing about this kind of position, you know. Something about that just makes me um, awe. Let's just say like it, it makes me awe inspired. Anyways, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. Um, this queen sacrifice idea with um, an early knight e5, with this pin on the bishop is not really being not really a pin. And this being forced sequence is pretty much leading to a forced good position for white. Maybe black can play bail out with this early queen c7 idea. But I mean, it's still a very, very good position after knight d5, of course. And I mean, this maybe is, this is the best position that, uh, sorry about that, knight takes c7 here. Uh, maybe this is the best that black can get, you know. So, um, if that's the best that black can get, then I'd be, um, I feel like this position is promising and therefore the line should be much better for white to, to almost winning. So um, I think this is a positional kind of sacrifice of the queen where you get two pieces and it's just an overall very strong continuation if you want to keep in mind. It's not even this position that this kind of thing comes up with. Uh, the the um, absolute pin is not really applied here. I mean, the queen is really valuable, but the attack on the king is sometimes even more valuable. Um, of course, this is not possible if the king was on d1, but um, I think this is a very instructive theme. Um, and of course, white is some alternatives, of course, uh, along the way. Um, so this position might also happen after knight c3 and knight f6. I'm not really sure about that one. Hmm. Maybe d5, and we might get the same kind of variation out of it. I wonder if this is the same thing. Hmm. Black can even consider taking an e5. Hmm, but that's probably good for white. This kind of position is probably a bit better for white. Um, I wonder if this queen sacrifice idea is on. Yeah, it might be on. <clears throat> um... I'm not really sure, actually. This is a very, very fascinating. Anyways, guys, um, there's similar types of sacrifices you want to keep out for. This is just one of them. So thanks a lot for watching the video, and you know, drop a like or a comment or anything about that kind of business uh, if you uh, have any ideas on um, where uh, where something similar might appear up in your games. I'd like to hear about your own experience with this kind of stuff too. So see you around, guys. Nice to see you watching that video. See you.